The McGlade Gallery is named after Brother Athanasius McGlade. He, he worked here, he was lecturing until he was 99. We have a great privilege tonight to have uh, Professor Sasha Grishin, who's going to launch the exhibition. Waterfield unites all three artists is the belief that art is not only about the flesh and the mimetic representation of what the eye sees, but it's also about that which cannot be seen and that which belongs to the realm of the spirit. Miriam Rose is an artist who belongs to a tradition which may date back 40,000 years. Mikhail Gawovic is a Serbian-born artist whose art relates to that of the Holy Orthodox Church. While Chelsea Atkins is a student and an emerging artist who is exploring portraiture in the light of her own faith. In sacred art, the artist is not the inventor or the heroic creator, but a much more humble medium through which ancient truths are revealed. Quite often, when an uninitiated viewer sees for the first time an icon of the crucifixion, a depiction of the Virgin and Child, or a painting of the Rainbow Serpent, they encounter something exotic, something they register rather than see or understand. Um, again, my turn now for the trepidation after the uh, Professor Sasha Grishin's talk, because um, as someone said uh, rightly, there is a cousin between what we visual artists or visual artists in general do and uh, what they kind of try to do with some sort of so-called serious stuff. And then we are in the situation to sort of um, articulate it, present it nicely, wrap it and kind of pass it to you in a completely different medium an oratory medium, verbal medium, wherein I have to be kind of almost entertaining, at least I kind of uh, get that feeling that this, you know, uh, life is too serious, everything is too academic, icons are too serious, so I would say a few jokes, but I can't. What we see through our eyes, I believe, can cut through our analytical and critical tendencies, going straight to the heart, the spirit, the understanding, the ah moan. Same with music. These, like the incredible beauties of nature, can give a momentary connection with the divine and open that part of us that is seeking, thus enabling the beginning of finding. Um, almost exactly 60 years ago, um, my parents worked in the south of Serbia. Professor Grishi knows the place that I will mention. That was the monastery of uh, Bogorodica Ljevishka, or Mother of God of Ljevishka. Um, and because my mother was an art uh, historian, but uh, the stepfather was a restorer, an icon painter as well, but also a restorer of frescoes, which was important. And that took him and took us with him to different churches and monasteries in Serbia and uh, Kosovo. One day, uh, I happened to be in the church when uh, there was a big uh, hum about, big buzz, something obviously great has happened, something very, very important. Uh, the church is from 14th century, started its uh, uh, frescoes at the, uh, in the 13th century, but then continued throughout the 14th century. The Turks came in the 14th century, um, desecrated the church, covered it with mortar, rendered it, and then, so 500 years later, uh, the team of restorers uh, led by my stepfather detached that mortar, thus revealing and unveiling those beauties from, that were frozen and silent for 500 years. Suddenly, they saw, everybody could see, and of course, I was taken to see it as well, an inscription in Arabic language. Uh, the apple of my eye is the nest to your beauty. 
So, to me, later, 10 years later, probably, I started painting icons myself just to see what happens. That's how I thought, and for some strange reason, I stayed with that. I traveled the world and saw most wonderful things in the world. Temples, uh, different religions have different churches, temples, etc., and so forth. I see no problem in admiring the Buddhist temple or Indian temple or uh, mosque. I lived in, in, the, in the Middle East for three years. I was entering their mosques uh, that are now so notoriously uh, damaged in Iraq and Libya and was absolutely uh, marveling at the beauty of another kind. I didn't see any kind of reason, or any kind of animosity, no reason not to admire such a thing. But I certainly didn't have guts to take something and write on the wall, listen, this is fantastic. That man did have guts, but uh, also he knew that after the scribe or the calligrapher wrote these words, they will be covered by with a mortar. You are the winner when you are in the process. So when you are in the process, especially if we are talking icons, because I do different things and I hope this show shows that, um, you are basically building, making an icon, uh, you are making either a prayer, uh, uh, saying a prayer yourself, or building a little temple, because you take care of absolutely everything that is going on with the icon from the very start. You do the gesso, those famous 10 to 12 layers. You do the gilding. You uh, start painting with egg tempera, etc., and so forth, until you then wait for that egg tempera to dry, and nobody can tell you when is the time. You have to feel it on a gut level. You have to know yourself with your life, with, with the empiric kind of situation of when is the good time to varnish or seal the icon for the first time, normal situation. But I'm mostly interested in me being, uh, coming to terms with my own consciousness, that I did everything right, uh, the best I could for that icon to happen, uh, whether now somebody will like it or not, that is completely beyond me. religious art, so to call it, uh, uh, doesn't need to have absolutely anything with, to do with icons. doesn't need to have any relation whatsoever because it does not have any rules. So the, the talk about the differentiation between icons, uh, what are icons and uh, as opposed to the contemporary or not contemporary, if you like, religious art is simple. Icons follow a very heavy established structure, set of rules that you have to abide in order to call it an icon. Whereas the contemporary artwork, or starting from the traditional one, if you like, even from Leonardo's Da Vinci's uh, Last Supper to, to this day, you are free to do whatever you want. And uh, it is just you yourself that kind of guides you to deem it, to consider it, or to want it to be spiritual, religious, sacred, etc. To maybe help a little bit and spice up a little bit uh, this talk, I will just uh, draw your attention, please, to this uh, painting in front. Oh, I got a little figurine of Christ uh, uh, without one arm. So that is then down there uh, below to the left, if you like. Obviously, uh, so uh, from that point on, I kept or keep still uh, painting over and over again that same fractured figurine of Christ. Uh, at the beginning, I didn't know why I'm doing that, and I didn't go to any kind of psychotherapy to find out, but uh, I, I have it's special that um, I, want, I was quite all right with the uh, uh, human nature of Christ being depicted like that because it stands for the fractured humanity in general. All of us, we are so colossally, spectacularly imperfect and fractured. So this is uh, 
And this was my idea, at least, behind it. <clears throat> then, uh, so the Christ is down, completely annihilated, completely defeated. He's completely desolate. He's alone. He's left completely by everybody. He's alone in the world, facing the, the last moments of his uh, troublesome uh, end. And uh, in the background as well, I painted those lenses, if you can see there. Well, the lenses of spears are borrowed from Diego Velasquez's painting, uh, Surrender of Breda. But uh, what am I trying to do is to um, see how certain things, taken elements, taken out artistically, taken out of their the context that we know are now planted or replanted into the new context, would they would that work? Would they kind of speak a different idiom? Would they kind of talk to us? Would it evoke something? Would it resonate with us? Maybe yes, maybe no. So the lenses for me uh, symbolize uh, the so-called empire. They symbolize the establishment. The system is basically always stronger than, a, than a, an individual, no? even stronger than Christ, was able to kill somebody like Christ. 